uh, peace in the Middle this East. This is it, right? You yeah. have the whole copy it, of it. It is, it is here proposal. from somebody who attended yesterday, and Jared Kushner was the one engineering this as senior advisor uh, to President Trump and son-in-law. Jared, welcome to, uh, welcome to this show, but yesterday was your show. How would you rate uh, how this plan was accepted or not accepted? What was the feeling so, in the room? Uh, absolutely. Well, the feeling in the room was thrilled. I think what we saw yesterday was Israel take a giant step towards peace, and it was an accomplishment that only President Trump could have delivered on. President Trump has built the trust of the Israeli people. Uh, he's gotten them to spend the time, sit down, go through a detailed proposal. Uh, if you look at the original proposal, the Arab Peace Initiative, that was an eight-line proposal. It was a good-faith proposal. Past proposals have been two to three pages. This is an over 80-page proposal with a map, never been done before, right. and getting Israel to agree to a Palestinian state and also agreeing to a map is an amazing first step that will make us uh, be more closer to peace in the near future. Jared, what's in this proposal? So basically, it's a very technical proposal that gives the Palestinian people the ability to live a better life. It takes the, the land, which is very complicated because this issue has been ignored for so many years, and Israel's expanded more and more, which made it uh, harder and harder for the Palestinians to have a place uh, that they could have a, have a, a state. Uh, it doubles the territory that they have the ability to have, and it gives them a lot of economic incentives if they're willing to change their governance structures. You need to have freedom of press. You need to have respect for human rights. You need to have credible institutions that can a state. So uh, this gives them a pathway to really achieve everything that they've always spoken about. And hopefully, once they go through it, they'll have the courage to do what they've done. But again, the Palestinian track record is perfect in not being able to make a deal. But this opportunity is, is, is available only because of President Trump's leadership. And I know you have been working on this for the last three years, Jared. Uh, and yesterday was the first step, as you put it. But the Palestinians have already walked away. They, you know, they're rejecting it flat out. During the last three years, has their uh, reluctance to sign on board been like this the whole three years, or was it at the last minute they go, and not, not what we want? No, look, they said that before they even saw what's in it. Uh, I think it was much better than they expected. It's gotten a lot of regional support. Uh, like I said before, these people have been professional at not finishing or making deals. And what they don't like is that we're not going to do it the same way that it's been done before. But the way that it's been done before has failed. So right. President Trump has been taking a new approach. And again, what we're seeing with them is that if they want to get to a conclusion, they have to act like people who are ready for a state. And they're proving through their reaction that they're not ready to have a state. Yeah, they're delivering uh, lunch for later, and now it's finally there. Hopefully, they can unload that truck they before we're done. They have a kitchen there. Yeah, <laughs> uh, as a, a condition of statehood, Jared, the Palestinian leaders must recognize Israel as a Jewish state. That's a tough one. Renounce terrorism, disarm militant groups, and halt payments to families of Palestinians imprisoned in Israeli jails or to families of Palestinians killed during military activity. Uh, they say, well, this is part of our social programs when people leave someone. <laughs> so that's going to be tough to do. They have to tell Hamas, release your control of Gaza. That's going to be extremely tough. Who is going to convince them to release control? Look, you're not going to change people's minds overnight, but what this does is it puts out a framework. The most important part that this does is if you think about what's America's interest in this plan, uh, America is focused on counterterrorism and counterextremism. Mm -hmm. The president was able to defeat the ISIS caliphate. He's rolling back Iran's aggression. They're the largest state sponsor of terrorism in the world. Since he's done what he's done, the amount of money going to terrorists has dramatically decreased. But the issue of Jerusalem and the mosque and Muslims not being able to visit there and the feeling that the mosque is under attack is something that's been used by jihadists and radical clerics to radicalize the Muslim youth throughout the region. So what this does is it very uh, strongly gets Israel to affirm that they're going to respect uh, Jordan's whole, uh, place uh, and, and the way that they are with the mosque and the holy sites. And it allows all Muslims from throughout the world to come and visit the mosque and pray there. So if the mosque is safe and Muslims can come and pray, this should dramatically reduce tension and hopefully lead to fewer radicalizations and less extremism and less threats to America. Right. Jared, I was curious. I was thinking about this yesterday and this morning because I know you married Ivanka. She converted to Judaism. And um, you grew up in this area where there are a lot of Jews, and this is an issue that matters. Extra, you know, it's very important to a lot of our friends that live in this area. When you were you raised in this Jewish family, you marry the daughter of the President of the United States, and then you are taking part in this, changing our, our country, their country, our entire world. What does this mean to you on a personal level? 
Well, every day I, I have the honor of working in the White House for this president, and it's not just on this issue, it's on all issues. Today we're going to sign uh, the USMCA, the largest trade deal in the history of the world, which I had the honor of working on with Ambassador Lighthizer. Uh, a couple weeks ago we signed the trade deal with China. Uh, every day President Trump is making this country better. He's brought a businessman's approach to Washington. He's a pragmatist. He's getting things done. Uh, the people in Washington may not like it that he's making them do work, and he's making things happen that people have spoken about for many years before but couldn't deliver on. But it's an honor to serve this country. America is by far the greatest country in the world. Right. And I have to tell you that the president, myself, the whole team, uh, we see so much potential for this country, and we will continue to work hard to continue to make it better and stronger. And yesterday was just a great example of one of the most impossible deals in the history of the world, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Most politicians are too scared to try. President Trump is going to try to solve every hard problem that he believes can make our country better and make the world safer. Well, you were involved with criminal justice and USMCA and now the Middle East peace. Do you ever get a day off, Jared? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have plenty of days off when I stop my government service. It's an honor. I've done this now for three years. I worked for a year on the campaign, so it's been four years. But to be honest, uh, the, gratifi the, gr the, the gratification that it is of serving the country, meeting so many people who are so passionate about right. the president. You saw the president's rally last night. The intensity and support for what he's doing is unbelievable. People feel like he's giving them their country back. He's making the changes they want to see forever. And so I'll have plenty of time to relax okay. and enjoy life when this is over. Yeah, hopefully they'll pick up this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia, Egypt, mm -hmm. Jordan can provide the pressure to bring the Palestinians to the table and yes. give your plan a real shot. Hey, uh, so you. so if the president is reelected, will you continue your government service? Are you going to say, I've done enough? Uh, so, again, you know, we've been volunteers here. We left our, our, our businesses and our lives to do this. But, uh, again, there's so many more things to do, and I think that this administration continues to get better and better. Uh, the president, he's uh, cycled out a lot of the bad people. He has so many amazing people serving in government now. It's an honor to serve with all of them. And I just think that we're getting a lot of things done. And in the next term, I think there's even more things that the president Jared, will be able Jared, to get what's, done. What's who, are, who are the bad people? Who are the bad people you cycled out? <laughs> Uh, we've got. I think let's focus on the people who are here, who are doing, uh, who are doing great jobs. But again, the president is—he's never did government before, and he's done an unbelievable job. He's delivered more in the first three years than any president in history, and you see the results. The economy's never been stronger. He's created seven million jobs, uh, taken millions of people out of food, uh, out of poverty, taken people off of food stamps, right. given people the opportunity to live the American dream, hey, Jared, and, and really the best is yet to come. Going forward with this, with this um, Middle East peace plan, obviously you have. Uh, opposition from the Palestinians. What's the next step to try to get them on board? So you can't, uh, we can't want peace more than the Palestinians want to have peace, but they've been playing the victimhood card for 25 years. And so for the first time, they have an offer on the table, thanks to President Trump's leadership, to have a state, to have a $50 billion economic plan that would be funded by the global community. Uh, people are willing to do it, but in order to do that, they need to be free of terror. They can, nobody's going to come and invest and create jobs if they feel like there's going to be terror attacks and if there's no governance structure where there's a fair judiciary uh, and freedom. So uh, it's really now the ball in their court. If they want to approach it, we'll deal with it. If not, right. we've got plenty of other things to deal with here. Uh, we're very busy, and uh, and we'll work on other things. But if they want to come and make peace, then we're ready. Uh, if not, no other president could get this done other than President Trump. He got them the best offer they've ever had. And again, it's going to be up to them. If they want peace, they know where to call us. Yeah, we have to run. So do you. But just real quick, uh, how disappointed are you in John Bolton's book? Uh, I have not seen the book. I, I don't know what's in it. But uh, what I can say right now is that the whole impeachment uh, you know, charade that's been going on for a couple months is just a big distraction. Uh, the country's doing great. We're focused on doing the work for the American people. Uh, I find that everyone leaves, uh, writes books about what a hero they were, how they knew better. But the reality is, is that the president's uh, the one who's been running this White House, running this government, and getting things done. And all the people who are doing the real work, uh, they're not writing books because they're too busy working right now. So right. they're here working every day and, and really doing a great job to bring all these historic reforms to this country. Jared, are people at the White House freaked out that they might uh, have to go to a witness phase in the Senate? Uh, I think it would be unfortunate because it's just uh, going to take more time. Again, the American people don't want Congress focusing on this 
uh, on this um, this hoax that they've been putting on. But uh, the reality is, is that if they end up going to a witness phase, uh, the, you know, the, the president's done nothing wrong. That will further be proven. But what you what you will find is what was the whistleblower doing? What were the Bidens up to? There was a lot of dirty things that have been happening for a long time, and a witness phase will give the American people the opportunity to learn about that. Mm -hmm. But even with that being said, it's just a, it's a waste of time. You know, we should be working on more criminal justice reform, opportunity zones, uh, tax reform, all the great things that the president's been able to accomplish that nobody was ever ever, right. ever able to accomplish before. We want to do immigration reform. We want to do infrastructure. Uh, that's what we should be spending our time on, not on this silliness. Prescription drugs as well, which is, I hear both sides almost agree on. You just can't even bring it up because they have to sit there and eat candy and drink milk. <laughs> um, Jared, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's an thanks, honor Jared. to be with you guys. All right. Hopefully you. it's not going to be so infrequent. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you. Uh